Hey, what's up guys? This is Norman3000. And today, I'm replaying the Assassin's Creed Odyssey on New Game Plus. Six years later, should you play it? With regards to AC Odyssey, I've already spent about 270 hours when I played this back in 2019 to 2020. AC Odyssey is the second in, I guess, the action RPG trilogy of the Assassin's Creed franchise. First being AC Origins, which I loved as I love Egypt. And third being AC Valhalla, which I entirely skipped as I don't like the Vikings aesthetic. Being the second on the trilogy and being an Assassin's Creed, this is one of, if not the biggest map in the Assassin's Creed franchise. Greece is huge and this is where it will turn you off. Yes, the map is huge and there are a lot of things to do. And depending on where you are in your life, Seeing this, you'll probably be either like, Oh god, it's this big? Yeah, no, I'm out. Or, Oh wow, there are lots of things to do here. Back in 2019, I fell on the latter, as I was much younger, and with not much responsibility. I also have a proclivity to Greece, as we were made to read mythology by Edith Hamilton. And since then, I tend to play through Greek-inspired games. Yes, I love God of War. With regards to Greece, even in 2024, I don't think anyone will disagree, but Assassin's Creed Odyssey is a beautiful game. The graphics still hold up six years later, Greece is vast and stunning, and the accompanying soundtrack is something I have on my playlist. I love the OST and the shanties on this game. For the actual things to do here in AC Odyssey's massive map, there will be a lot of question marks. Like, literally a lot. Hundreds. These question marks are mostly places with check boxes to do, so it really depends on your mood if you want to finish them. Some of these places do contain quest-related items. It's cool to walk up to a quest and then have the item immediately ready. I found a little change in dialogue fun. Ah, I've already been there. Here you go. It's a nice attention to detail the devs and actors put extra effort into. Here's a quick example of me conquering a cave before talking to a quester. Uh, no wishes of mine, granted though. I'm running out of money and tribute. I'm poor myself, you know. I did something wrong. You know, Hermes, you can't be a trickster. Oh, but there are many gods in this cave, all asking for different things. Go hear him yourself. You'll get my last tribute if you do. I need to know if they're real. All right, don't worry. I'll go. Oh, thank you. Remember, be careful where you step, Mistyos. You'll be walking on holy ground. We'll see about that. They're not. Last time I was at the Drogarati cave, it was full of thieves. It's not a holy place. No gods? Not one? Well, uh, it's settled then. Take my tribute for your bravery. Speaking of quests, this is an Assassin's Creed game. Non-story related quests are 90% of the time a fetch quest. The other 8% are either kill quest, escort quest, or investigate quest. The other 1% are for conquer battles, for control, either siding with Athenians or Spartans, and the other one is for the ones that I missed. For the story, Assassin's Creed Odyssey predates Assassin's Creed Origins, so you are not really an assassin of the Brotherhood. You are, however, a sword for hire. You do have the precursor to the Templars, which are the Cult of Cosmos. The story is okay, but the main quests may be so far apart from each other, you may have forgotten what already happened. For my case, this was not an issue. What I did was, and this is not really recommended as I was batshit crazy back then, what I tend to do in Assassin's Creed games is when the world has been opened, I tend to synchronize all viewpoints ASAP. And on older games, I tend to complete these question marks too. But ever since Syndicate, I have stopped doing this as there was just too much. Regardless, I did play up until I have free access to their ship and literally synchronize all viewpoints and most of the time, I completed all the question marks of each area. At the very least, 50% of the question marks have been completed. That may not sound like a lot, but for Odyssey, it is. 
One feature expanded over Origins are the choices. However, the choices are mostly inconsequential, especially quests not related to the main story. Some choices does affect the ending scene, but these choices are hours apart in the story where you can't really do a soft reset. As far as I can remember, there are only two choices that have a relatively big impact journey-wise. Without spoiling, one is near the beginning, and the other one is a companion. If you do want to get spoilers, here is your spoiler warning. Proceed to the next chapter if you do not want spoilers. For the ending spoilers, depending on who you choose to spare, there will be different ending scenes. The choices you do with your mom will also affect the ending. For the choices that affect your journey, one is with the sick family. If you spare them, they will spread the plague on Athens, and the other is with Hippocrates. If you dilly-dally, Hippocrates will scold you and tell you something like, you should always prioritize the sick. On my first playthrough, I kept him waiting and the patients died. He did not travel the world with me after the last mission with him. That was almost 200 hours apart, so yeah, I really couldn't do a soft reset. For the rest of the choices, I typically save before a quest and do all choices and no choice really matters. What I'm trying to say is, you only have the illusion of choice here. After doing almost 50% of the map and playing whatever fetch quest I felt like playing, I was already maxed out at level 99 with over 150 hours played with only about 5% of the main quest completed. At this point when I started to play the main quest, it was simply talking to the concerned NPCs and doing the occasional missed markers. Doing this gave me a nice flow with the story and I didn't particularly felt lost. The story was basic but it was good enough. I guess C for the story, and that is with all the bias I have towards the Assassin's Creed franchise. So, looking back, did I have a good time? Hell yeah, of course. Would I do it again? Well, maybe. I did start playing on New Game Plus. I'll probably synchronize all the viewpoints again, but I probably won't do all the question marks. Would I recommend to play this in 2024? Honestly, not really. Assassin's Creed Odyssey is not a game for everyone. The huge map may be big, but it's very repetitive. I totally get the criticism of Odyssey being a huge, empty world. And this will not be to everyone's taste. I get this because this is exactly what I felt like playing Valhalla. Valhalla did not work for me because as I said earlier, I don't like the Vikings or Norse aesthetic. Odyssey worked for me because I love Assassin's Creed and I love Greek mythology. Regardless if it was good or bad, I would play this one. And for me, it was good. Full disclosure, I love the new God of Wars. My love of God of War exceeds my apathy towards the Viking or Norse aesthetic. Sadly for Assassin's Creed, I don't love it that much to exceed my apathy towards this aesthetic. If you love Assassin's Creed and you love Greek mythology, you will certainly get a kick out of this especially for the first couple of hours. But it really gets too long in the tooth and I really can't blame you if you stop somewhere along the way. For everyone else looking for a more compact and robust open world, look elsewhere. For today, for me, let me go back to weakening the current area's forces, killing their leader, and engaging in conquer battles. Thank you so much for watching guys. Consider like, sharing, and subscribing if you found this useful. This has been Norman3000, see you soon, and happy gaming.